Welcome to this section of videos about utilizing hooks. In this video, we will introduce hooks. The objectives of this video are to introduce hooks and examine basic hooks like use state, use effect, and the use context hook. We will also examine custom hooks and other additional hooks offered by the React API. Let's start with some background about hooks. Hooks were introduced at React Conf of October 2018, and they became stable in part of React in version 16.8. So if you would like to work along with the samples, please make sure you are at least using that version. In short, hooks are JavaScript functions that provide a simpler way to encapsulate stateful behavior and side effects and user interfaces when utilizing functional components. Prior to the introduction of hooks into React, the only way components could utilize state within a component was through a class-based component. For example, in the constructor of our password input.js component is where we declare our initial state, and within our set item function is where we use set state to update our state. Some of the patterns discussed throughout this course were utilized as methods of state management and component composition. Since we have established patterns in legacy code, like the higher order component pattern, render props, or compound component pattern, built on top of class components, that leaves us with the question of why were hooks even created? The introduction of hooks has opened multiple opportunities to write cleaner, more reusable code with less complexity. And that leads us to the motivation of why hooks were created as defined by the React documentation. The first motivation is simplifying the reuse of stateful logic. In past videos, we recognize this as something the render props pattern or higher order component pattern could solve. But that forces us to restructure our components in a way that might not always work for our use case of our application and leads to code that is difficult to read and maintain. You may see a common example of wrapper hell that can happen due to multiple levels of render props being applied. Issues like this will be resolved because the use of hooks will not manipulate the component hierarchy. The next reason is handling complex components. Though we start most components with good intentions, outside business requirements and unforeseen issues can lead to unmanageable code, such as having to manage logic across multiple lifecycle methods. Sometimes over abstracting your code and rendering when it's not needed can happen as well. Like this code, where it's a class component with some value in state, but can be manipulated by each lifecycle event and then rendered at some point. Code like this can be hard to follow, especially when other code is mixed in with it, because when you want to refactor, you run the risk of removing something that could lead to breaking changes. There are special hooks that deal with scenarios like this, that enables you to easily split complex components into smaller functions based on relation. The last motivation stated by React documentation is that classes confuse both people and machines. The class concept is a common learning curve and issue for beginners to grasp when they start developing in React and React Native. And in terms of machines, according to the React documentation, classes do not minify well, and they cause issues with hot reloading while developing. With hooks, we no longer need to utilize the class keyword, and we can use stateful logic within our functional components. Now that we understand the hooks are JavaScript functions and why they were created, I will briefly introduce some of the basic and other additional hooks that are available for use. As referenced, here are the basic hooks that React offers. useState, which will return a stateful value and a function to update it. useEffect. This one is kind of like our lifecycle methods, but it's a hook that accepts a function that will run after render. Lastly is useContext. This accepts a context object and returns the current context value for that context. These are the most common hooks that you'll most likely spend a lot of your time using, 
We'll take a more in-depth look at each of these in the next video. Some of the additional hooks are use reducer, which is an alternative to use state. It accepts state and action. And this should be the preference over use state with a complex state logic. Use callback, which accepts a function in an array of dependencies and returns a memoized callback, which is like an optimized function. And this is useful in the cases that we rely on should component update lifecycle method. Use memo. This accepts a function and returns a memoized value. This will help avoid expensive calculations and enhance optimization. Use ref. This accepts an initial value that will be mutable and will persist the whole lifetime of the component. Use imperative handle. This will accept props and a ref, and it will customize the instant value that is exposed to the parent components when the ref is being utilized. Use layout effect, which has the same signature as use effect, but executes synchronously after all DOM mutations. Lastly, use debug value. This is used to identify custom hooks in React DevTools. Again, this was a brief introduction to each hook, so I encourage you to review the React documentation if you would like to learn more about the additional hooks provided by React. As mentioned in the use debug value, the React API enables developers to create custom hooks. A custom hook is essentially a JavaScript function that starts with the word use. And this function can be composed of other hooks. For example, this function called use custom hook. It uses the use state hook to define state and how to manipulate it. Then it has a use effect that will describe once the component renders, and then when the component unmounts, the use effect will clean up and unsubscribe by passing in the state to this call subscription.unsubscribe. Lastly, the custom hook will return the state. This may not be the most practical example, but the idea here is to show you what a custom hook may look like. Before we move on, let's discuss the two rules of using hooks. First, it's only call hooks at the top level. You never want to call hooks inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. That's because you want to make sure hooks are always called in the same order when a component renders. The React documentation states that this will allow their API to correctly preserve the state of hooks between multiple use state and use effect calls. The next rule is only call hooks from React functions, like React components or from other hooks. This rule also enforces the idea of setting a proper standard for hook implementation, and it enables tooling to clearly track the usage of hooks in the code. We have set a firm foundation of hooks, and we are now ready to move on.